Hello everyone, my name is Victor Wooding. Welcome to my channel. If you're a first time visitor, don't be afraid to hit the subscribe button. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a contact form that sends email using SendGrid. SendGrid is a cloud-based email delivery platform. It is free to sign up and the first 40,000 emails are free. For this course, I'll be using the Django blog tutorial repo. I'll post the link in the description. You will also need to create a SendGrid account. Forms allow users to interact with a website by entering data. Forms should specify which HTTP method will be used to return the form data. HTTP methods include GET and POST. Django forms use the POST method. In the POST method, the browser bundles up the form data, encodes it for transmission, sends it to the server, and then receives back its response. A request that makes changes to the database should use POST. The GET method will be least secure and should be used for requests that do not affect the state of the system. Django prepares and restructures data to make it ready for rendering. It creates HTML forms for the data. It receives and processes submitted forms and data from the client. The Django form class describes a form and determines how it works and appears. The fields of a form class map to HTML form input elements. A form's fields are themselves classes. They manage form data and perform validation when a form is submitted. Here is the blog we built running on Python's built-in server. Currently, when we click on contact, it does nothing. Click on the blog folder and create a file named forms.py. From Django, we need to import forms. If you clone this project from GitHub, you will need to configure your Python interpreter. Open settings in Windows or preferences on Mac and select Project Interpreter. Click on the cog wheel and select Add. Click on Existing Environment and we want to browse to the location of the Python executable in the .env folder. Hit OK when done and you should be able to see all the packages that have been installed in the project. Hit Apply and then hit OK. Return to forms.py and create a class named contact form which inherits forms.form. Create a field and call it name. Set it to forms.char field and set the maximum length to 80 characters. Create another field and call it message. Set it to forms.char field and the widget will be forms.text area. Create another field and call it email. Set it to forms.email field. Create another field. You can name it anything you like. This field is specifically designed to target bots. It's not required and will remain hidden. Give it a label of leave empty and set the validators to should be empty. This is the name of a function that will be created next. Should be empty is going to take a value. If there is a value in force field, a validation error will be raised. Create a new file in the templates blog folder and name it contact.html. Extend the base template, open a block named content and be sure to close this block with end block. Open urls.py 
in the blog folder. And the path is going to have a string with contact forward slash as the first argument, views.contact form as the second argument, and for the name, set it to contact as the third argument. Open base.html and look for the list navigation item. For the href, remove the pound sign and replace it with a template tag. For the URL, enter contact as a string. Open views.py and create a function named contact underscore form, which is going to take a request. Create a contact object and store it in a variable named form. We'll need to import contact form from dot forms. Use the dot prefix because forms is in the same folder as views.py. We'll next need to return a render object which is going to take a request. The URL that we want to render and a context dictionary which takes the contact form as the value. The key could be anything. In this case, it's set to form. At this point, if we click contact, we should be taken to an another page. You won't see the form as yet because we haven't placed anything in the content block. Open contact.html. Create a div with a class named container and add an h2 element that contains send me a message. Create a form and leave the action as an empty string. Set the method to post. Add a CSRF token. This is a unique, secret, unpredictable value that is generated by the server-side application. CSRF stands for cross-site request forgery. Use a for loop to loop through the hidden fields in the form. Use a for loop to loop through the visible fields in the form. For each visible item, we want to place it in a div with a class of form group. Place field errors in template tags. This would include error messages such as this field is required or this is not a valid email. Place field.label underscore tag in template tags and place these tags in a label element. Place template tags containing the field between two paragraph tags. End the for loop outside the form group div. Add a button of type reset and one of type submit. We can customize the form with CSS by targeting the ID property of each form element. When input elements are generated with Django, each field has its own unique ID. Give the container a top padding of 15 pixels. Give the name input field a width of 100%. Refresh the page in the browser to see the changes that were made. Set the width of the message field to be 100% as well. Set the width of the email field to be 100%. Refresh the page to see the form in the browser. Return to views.py to continue working on the contact form view function. We want the form to do something if the request.method is equal to post. Pass request.post into the contact form and store it in a variable named form. If the form is valid, we can test the form and print form is valid to the terminal. Let's go to the contact form and enter a name, a message, and an email address. Hit submit when finished. In the terminal, 
you should see a message, form is valid. Create a variable named subject and set it to be a formatted string which contains clean data from the name field. The clean data will contain the data that has passed validation. Create another variable named message and set it to form dot clean data and pass in message. Create a variable named sender and set it to form dot clean data and pass in email. Create a variable named recipient and this will contain a list of email messages that you would like the email sent to. We need to import a few things. From django.core.mail, import sendmail and bad header error. From Django HTTP, import HTTP response. We're going to call the sendmail method in a try accept block. The sendmail method is going to use the variables that we just created as arguments. We also add fail silently and set that to true. A bad header error will throw an exception and if this happens, we want to display an HTTP response which says invalid header found. Alternatively, you could use a pop-up modal, an alert, or another HTML page. If everything is successful, we will see success your email has been sent. Log in to your SendGrid account and click on API keys. Click create API key and we want a key with restricted access. Enable mail send and give the API key a name. When finished, click create and view. Copy the API key and return to PyCharm. Open settings.py in the root folder. Scroll to the bottom of this file and let's create some constants. Create a constant to store the SendGrid API key. Normally, you keep the API key in a file that wouldn't be uploaded to GitHub. For the purposes of this tutorial, it's okay. Create a constant to store the email backend. This value is a string which is sendgrid underscore backend dot sendgrid backend. Set sendgrid sandbox mode in debug to false. Open a terminal and run pip install django dash sendgrid dash v5. Here is my email inbox. It's completely empty. Go to the contact form in the browser. When the submit button is clicked, we get an HTTP response which says the email has been sent. Inside of my inbox, I can see the message that was sent. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you enjoyed it, hit like and please subscribe to see more Django tutorials.